Alright, today I'm going to be showing you how to replace your rear speakers in your Toyota Celica. So you'll need two. There's one on the right, one on the left, and there's a total of six speakers in the car. You have two in the back, two in the front, and then two tweeters. And so what I did here is I got this two pack. They're 240 watt, six and a half inch speakers. And what the six and a half inch means is that means it's the diameter from side to side. So this is a six and a half inch speaker. So what it'll come with, it comes with both speakers. It comes with these little covers, which we don't need because we're just, the car has stock covers that we're gonna use. So they're actually hidden. So no one's gonna steal your sound system. And then it also comes with these leads where these two ends plug onto the speaker. And these two ends will wire into. All right, then the next thing you'll need, you'll need some really rough sandpaper. So I have some 220 grit here. Um, the lower the number, the rougher it is, or if it's like 2000 grit sandpaper, it's going to be super fine. So you don't want that. So just something really rough to sand away the edge. And then I also have these boom mats. What this does is it makes your speakers more punchy, a little bit more bass, but it also protects it from water. For example, if water gets in your door, just kind of in the metal frame of the car, uh, this keeps the speaker dry and safe. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is just lift up on this and fold down your back seat. There'll be this little carpet flap. Go ahead and just kind of peel that over and that'll expose these two bolts right here. Now looking closer at it, I've removed the first 10 millimeter bolt and you gotta remove this other one. And just like that, you'll see where I've removed the two bolts. Next, you'll see these two little screws you got to remove. Uh, they're just a Phillips, so let's do that. What you do is you twist it 90 degrees until it pops up. And then the whole screw just kind of pries out. Just like that. Then you're going to want to come outside of the car. This little trim piece from here all the way to here that says Celica. You just want to gently kind of lift up on it from the inside pop this edge off just like that so it's loose now we want to get this door piece and so you just grab it from this edge and just pry all the way and get it off off of this overlip just like that so it exposes the sharp metal edge then coming back to the interior just lift up that carpet piece you'll see there's this metal hinge it's kind of in the way all you do is just pull your seat kind of diagonal and away. As you want to pop part of the seat out, you could remove the whole seat if you wanted. There are two bolts buried in the middle, but I wouldn't recommend it. So what you do is you just grab each side of the seat and just pull up straight. And just like that, you'll see it un comes undone. There's this little hook. All right, one thing I wanted to mention after pulling this out, I realized there is one more bolt. Um, it's either a 10 millimeter or just one of those screws, but it goes right here on the floor, uh, kind of back under the seat. It's easily accessible from the hatch. So with that being said, you got to remove that, the two bolts from the seat holder, and these two screws. All right, and just like that, you can see I got the whole trim piece removed. One thing I forgot to mention, the top part, you have to get a little aggressive and pull straight out on these so that way it'll unclip from the... Uh, plastic clips embedded in the frame and just so you know what I mean by the clips embedded in the frame You have to pull straight back so that those clips pop out of these clips So the first thing you're gonna want to do is unplug the speaker so to do that just follow these speaker wires Pinch in on the clip just pull it straight down might have to wiggle it a little bit Just like that There's the little clip and then some people like to buy the stereo uh, speaker adapters these plastic things but we can just repurpose the old ones that are already here. So what you do is you're actually going to cut out the old speaker. So just it's made out of cardboard. Just cut right into it. You're going to want to tear it out. Once it's all torn out, just pull it straight out. Next, you might try to put in your speaker. You'll realize the canyon isn't deep enough yet. There's these little studs that are in the way. So what I'm going to do is take a saw and cut those out. And just like that, you'll see I was able to cut out the star. Another thing to mention before cutting, it's going to create a little bit of dust. You don't want that dust falling down in your seatbelt actuator, so probably just cover that up with a bag so nothing gets in it and it gets all gritty. The next thing you'll notice is we have these two wires here. We actually don't need these or this whole white clip, so what you can do is you can take a Phillips screwdriver or something, kind of stick it on this side, and you should be able to just hammer that piece out just like that. Then what you'll do is you'll take your sandpaper and you just want to sand down the edges that you just sawed off. That way they won't cut into the cone. 
And then one last thing is we need to sand the face of it down. The reason we do this is because adding the speaker, an aftermarket speaker, and using the stock adapter, it's going to add a little bit of width. So you want to sand it down or else there's going to be a bulge in the panel. It just The panel won't sit well because of this bulge. So you can either do that by sanding down the face or maybe by trimming the panel. We're just going to sand down the face. Then the next thing you want to do is wiring. So one thing you can do that comes with this for the speaker is you can buy an adapter that plugs into this end right here and then connects to these two. But I'm just going to show you an easier and cheaper way. Save you the $7. So what I do, grab some wire cutters. Go ahead and just cut this end clip off. Just like that, so we have these two wires. Next, we're gonna wanna strip away some of the plastic so it exposes the copper. So looking at the two wires we have, it looks like white and this other one. This white one is gonna be the ground, whereas this is gonna be the positive, or so in a sense, white is negative, this is positive, and you just wire it. So the smaller one on your speaker, it's gonna be the negative, it'll have a minus sign, that goes to the white, negative. Whereas this bigger positive one, it's gonna have a plus sign, that goes to the colored positive. And as you can see here, we have our white to our negative. You can tell it's negative because it's gray with a black stripe. Black is usually ground. We have our colored to our positive. Those I went ahead and crimped together. You could solder, probably the best method. You could time together. Uh, just anything works, whatever you prefer. All right, next I'm gonna take my boom mat. Like I said, we're gonna put this in there for bigger bass and just to protect the speaker from water. Actually do it back here. That way you can feed your speaker wires through it. Just a small hole, nothing big. All right. So you're going to want to feed the speaker wire through here before you plug it onto the speakers. Punch a hole in your boom mat, put that there. Go ahead and just put the boom mat there, press it so it's flush. Pull the wires through and then connect it to the speaker. You'll see I plugged the two leads onto the speaker. You want to be careful, um, don't get too aggressive with it or you can break off this little component. And go ahead and pull the slack out of the speakers as you go so that way all the slack isn't inside the boom mat. Next, I'm gonna take my drill and the four screws that came with the speaker, and I'm gonna just drill into the four holes on the speaker, uh, through the boom mat, and straight just into this hard plastic. Here, I was able to screw it in. Uh, it's hit and miss with the screws since we're not using special adapters, but it's not too bad. And then before you do screw it in though, obviously I should have tested it, but I test it beforehand. It works, you can tell it's wired correctly because on the punching notes, the cone should pop outward kind of. I mean, it really depends on the song, but the, for the most part, um, a positive charge should fire this outward, negative should fire inward. What you ask for? Now that we got that all back together, you want to grab a rag, clean up all the shavings that you may have missed, and let's put it back together. Then to put the trim piece back in, uh, it's a big pain in the butt you'll have to kind of figure out for yourself. But as you can see on this piece, these need to be tucked under these bolts, these two screws we removed. So start by putting that under there and obviously move the seat belt. All right, after struggling with it for a long time, what you got to do is you got to, like I said, get this trim piece behind this one. Um, so I had to fold the seat down. I also removed that back tray that would usually be right here. And that way I could kind of get this behind there. And then to take it off, as I mentioned, you have to pull up from here. Now we got to hit it back in. So you can kind of line it up here and then you just give it. And make sure to get the door piece kind of where it curls around where we uncurled that earlier. Go ahead and curl that back over and you'll hit all this into place. And looking at the top of the trim piece, I forgot to mention this as well. So there's going to be this little nub. Um, make sure that that goes into the hole that's right there. Um, sometimes it'll be in the hole, so you have to pull it out and then slide it back in here. Once everything's lined up, go ahead and try to hit it into place. Make sure your seatbelt's still working for you. So as you can see, went ahead and put this trim piece back. Like I said, you gotta curl it back over the edge. Once that's in place, go ahead and hammer this back down just by stepping on it. Um, looks like it did it itself. And you also wanna put your seat back together. So assuming it's still lined up, there's this little clip that just goes into the hole. Set it in so it goes straight in and just, you'll hear it click like that. For cosmetics, you're gonna wanna do these screws. So once that's all lined up, you're gonna do this screw, this screw, and then if yours has one on the floor, it's kind of under the seat, do that one. But it's crucial that you get these two 10 millimeter bolts back in. Uh, that holds the seat in, so if you get in a wreck, the seat's not gonna fly out. So, like I said, make sure to put those back in. There may be torque specs online. 
All right, then to get this back piece back in, as I mentioned earlier, these little pins will pop out. The way to solve this is you go onto the plastic piece where it goes, you find the little rivet right here, and you just take the pin, slide it in, that way it'll snap back into place, just like that. All right, then to put these screws back in, what you want to do is have it retracted like that. Don't want it flush, so that way you can smash these pins back down. You insert it, then you twist it clockwise to lock it. And that's what it should look like once it's all put back together. All right, and as always, thanks for watching. I hope this helped. Sorry I didn't give a lot of instruction on putting this panel back together. It's really just a hassle, just any way you can get it back together. Make sure to do that, put all the bolts in. Sounds great. Next, I'll probably be honestly cleaning the car because it's disgusting. I haven't detailed in months. Um, the next video, though, I'm probably going to fix the power mirror that doesn't work or maybe the windshield uh, washer squirters that don't work or the AC knob that busted off, so stay tuned.